I love this topic and I can stay on it forever. Gavin, let me just throw it to you. You've always got something. Gavin is, uh, Gavin's a very interesting man, by the way. He's new to our group. Um, Gavin, Gavin is actually a, a trainer, a, a sales trainer. Gavin, what makes up the successful people you coach? Uh, action takers for me, someone that actually does it. You know, we have people in the business that talk about doing it and then people that actually do it. Uh, and I think it's huge when we talk about confidence, um, coming across on the phone or face to face, whatever is huge. Even though if you don't 100% know what you're doing, you've got to be confident because if they don't feel that, um, then it's a struggle, right? It's a struggle to get that sale. And you're not ever selling. You know, like I said, I've been watching, uh, came in, when I came into this business, been watching Claude for many years before we even started working together. And, it, and I just, I get it and I understand it. You know, I understand the importance of uh, not selling. You know, someone, I need someone to sell to me. Uh, and that's kind of the key because when you've got that control, the control is so powerful in negotiation when they're on the back foot and they're persuading me to do something, it's just huge. And it's a great, it's a, some people see it risky, right? When I'm telling someone that I want it so bad, but I'm telling them maybe it's not for them. Maybe it's not going to work. Like it's, it's, it's to some people it seems risky because I do want it to work obviously, but that reverse psychology just gets them, you know, coming to me to say, well, it is going to work for me. This is why I want to do it. And then I say, Okay, maybe, maybe we can make this work then, you know, and, and come in. And that's kind of what me and Claude have been working, you know, with. So for me, the people that we work with, it's always, if we can get someone, just like Audrey was saying, an action taker that's just going to get on and do the task, they're much easier to work with. If you're a person that's just uh, information and you're not going to take an action, it doesn't matter how, how much knowledge you have. Like Claude can't work with you if you're not doing it because there's nothing to change, right? There's nothing to, uh, to adapt. I'd rather have someone that's just going full at it and then we can tweak and change and role play and get it better to get success where someone will go, it's not working. Okay, great. How many people have you spoken to this week? Three. Okay, well, I don't know what to tell you then. Yeah, it won't work because the yeah. quantity is not there. Yeah, you know exactly. Exactly. Aaron, if, you're, if you can hear me here. Let me unmute you. Just, just, I want to thank you for that, Kevin. Aaron, you hire a lot of people who work for you in sales. What, can you tell the winner? Can you tell the winner from the uh, person who's going to leave in six months? You know, it's interesting. Uh, there's been times where both where I thought that was going to happen and it didn't pan out. And there's also been times where I had to hire somebody against my better judgment who turned out to be fantastic. So I would say, though, you look. 70% of the time, you have a pretty good gut feeling of what this person can do. The problem is, is that making cold calls, as you guys all know, is not easy. And people can say they have, they have sales experience, they've been athletes, all these great stories and things that they tell you. And when you put them on a call and they get rejected over and over again, it's a different story. So it's, it's hard, right? I remember all the companies I worked with before I started my own business. I gave great interviews. I gave, I gave the best interview ever. And then I found out how boring the job was or how I wasn't rewarded, paid enough money for the efforts I got in. And I started to be a, sl I started to be a slacker uh, in it. You know, it just, uh, I lost my motivation, my mojo, even though I gave these great interviews. I just was wondering how to read, if, it's, if, if there's a formulation to read people. For me, there's one thing I think that stands out. When I look at all the successful, I would say the vast majority of the successful commercial brokers in New York City did not go, and this is not a way to, this is not a way to make fun of them, but did not go to Ivy League schools. Very few of them did. Most of them went to big state schools or small liberal, liberal art colleges or just small private universities. That's something that's very interesting to me. It's and, <laughs> And that's funny, you know, um, I went to a county college, a state college. Um, I did not go to Harvard Law School. I went to a very small law school. So my wife went to Columbia. Okay, so we always have this Ivy League versus, versus uh, what's your background type of thing. You know, we have this constant discussion. So you can't really, uh, somebody who's, who does, uh, is successful in school is not necessarily translating the business though, do they? 
interesting stuff there. Okay. Um, uh